Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to OBHTrojans.tv. For the season finale, your OBA Trojans coming in with a record of 8-1 and one on the season. Already confirmed a district championship. Traveling down the road to Pond Creek, Oklahoma to take on the Pond Creek Hunter Panthers. Beautiful night for football here in northwest Oklahoma. Hardly a lick of wind blowing. The flags hanging straight down. Uh, temperature in the 60s. It's just a beautiful night for high school football as we prepare to kick off. 63 degrees out here. Beautiful football facility here at Pond Creek. The Trojans have won the toss and elected to start the game with the ball, defending the south end zone, so that's where we'll line up. Pond Creek comes in with a record of 6-3. and three. So Judd Cheatham deep to receive for the Trojans. Very few teams kick it to Judd. Very, most teams will squib it or go onside. So we usually expect that early. And we see an onside kick next to nice high bounce. That's going to make it back to Cheatham. He's going to scoop it up at the 30. Now he's going to cut it up inside. He's got room to run. He can break one tackle. Judd Cheatham can go all the way. It's the opening kickoff. I don't know if anybody's going to catch him from behind. Cheatham cuts it across the field. 15, 10, 5, stiff arm. Touchdown, Judd Cheatham. Starts off the game in the right way for the Trojans. Onside kick backfires for Pond Creek. Cheatham scoops it up at the 30-yard line. Scamper 70 yards for the touchdown, and OBA is on the board just 15 seconds into the game. Amazing run there from the senior, number 10, Judd Cheatham. So Pond Creek tried to keep the ball away from him, went with the onside kick, but took a nice high hop, and by the time it came down, it was low enough to be in the vicinity of Judd Cheatham. Eli Lichty let it go. Judd Cheatham scoops it up, and he is gone. OBA on the board, 6-0. So two-point conversion just 15 seconds into the game. Couldn't have asked for a better start for the Trojans. Moving on the line, but the snap goes, goes to Cheatham. He gets around the edge easily. Two-point conversion, OBA, and immediately the score is 8-0. Your OBA Trojans vault into the lead. So I don't think the Trojans could have asked for a better situation to start the game by scoring without the offense ever even coming on the field. So we'll turn it around, and OBA will kick off early in the first period. If you're new to OBA football this season, when number 10 gets the ball, you can often expect fireworks, and that's what's happened right off the bat here in OBA. Or here at Pond Creek, I should say, for OBA. So the Trojans now with the kickoff team on the field. Eli Lichty set to kick off. Been a nice combination of, of kickoffs for Lichty, some on, on side, some pooch kicks, and some deep kicks. He's going to kind of pooch this one into the gap. Should land about the 20, and they're going to it falls dead. It's scooped up at the 18, and coverage is right on him. Brought down right at the 20-yard line. Perfect kickoff from number nine, Eli Lichty. Just far enough from the sideline, it hits the ground and just comes to a stop at about the 17-yard line. So the receiver has to go get it. He scoops it up and is immediately brought down. So first down and 10, Pond Creek, starting in the hole here tonight. So it looks like for Pond Creek, the quarterback's number 14, Caden Teft, in there at quarterback. So he's going to drop back to pass right away. Pressure applied by him. He, he takes off running. Flushed out to the sideline. Still on his feet. Forced out of bounds by Lichty. There is a flag on the field. So that Trojan defensive line hits into the backfield almost immediately, and Teft just takes off running. No time to, to go through his checks. No time to go through his receivers. And a 
defensive holding call on a running play, so I'm not sure what happened there. So that'll be a first down. So first down, Pond Creek at the 30. So Pack to Pass is going to swing it out to the side. Cheatham there in coverage. He's going to burst it to the outside. A lot of speed there. Tripped up and brought down finally. Big game for Pond Creek. Ian Easton brings him down. You don't see that very often where someone's able to evade Judge Cheatham. Elijah Chambers with the dive at the, at the shoestring to trip him up and slow him down a little bit. And... Ian Easton finishes him off, so first down. Oh, he stepped out of bounds at the 48-yard line, so nice job, Elijah Chambers, with the diving trip there. Pressure applied by the Trojans. Sidestep from theft. He's still scrambling, still looking for help. A little shove there from the offensive line. Unloads it upfield, and it's caught. Pass caught at the 39 right on the 40-yard line. So that'll bring up second down. Nice play there from Caden Teft, the quarterback, to avoid the rush, keep the play alive, and find a receiver. Nice reception brought in there by Harrison Stapleton, the senior. High pass. He had to go up and get it, and Judge Cheatham chopped him down immediately. So no yards after catch. Another pass, another rush, another scramble. He's not going to go anywhere this time. It's going to be a sack. Two-yard loss there. Looks like uh, Chambers was in there on that one, along with Jackson Crow. So that'll be a sack, making it third and three now for Pond Creek. So a two-yard loss. So the Trojan defensive line kind of having their way. They're getting into the backfield on every play. Uh, Teff doing a good job of avoiding the rush, but the Trojan defensive line is in the Pond Creek backfield every play so far. And they haven't even really shown any blitzes yet, so it's it's been just the three primary linemen. It's going to be an option play to the near side and forced out of bounds by Ian Easton. So short gain, Ashton Banks with a short gain there. Got maybe a yard. Wow, really, really generous spot. Oh. No. Which is it? Which is it? He's in receiving different. The Lions judge first had it at the 31, which was a good four yards ahead of where they were, and now they've moved it back to the 39. So, yeah, they spotted it at the 36 and initially, uh, but the line judge on the near side of the field was saying, no, he was out of bounds way before that, and it's on the 39-yard line. So fourth and one for Pond Creek. Play clock is stopped. Now they wind the play clock, so plenty of time for Pond Creek to make a decision here. I'd look for a quarterback draw here. They just are pitching off here to number three. Going to be an option to the far side of the field. Gobbled up, stopped for no gain. On the 39-yard line, so nice defensive play there. Wyatt Hofen. First game back from an injury comes flying up from his cornerback position and makes the stop. Turnover on downs. Trojans will take over at their own 39-yard line. So no gain there. Great play from Wyatt Hofen. I know he's excited to be back out on the field after missing three weeks uh, with a broken bone in his hand. He's, he's still got it heavily taped, and I think there's a soft cast underneath the tape, but I, I don't know that for sure. But nice play from Wyatt flying up there and making that play. A little bit of depth coming back off the injured reserve list for, for the Trojans. Cheat him up under center. Easton comes in motion. Going to be handoff to Ian Easton. Eli Lichty out front. And he's going to be stopped for no gain. Flag comes flying out early. So it's going to be a hold as per usual. 
So they'll mark it off. As we've said several times this year, the Trojans seem to respond better when it's first and 20 than they do on first and 10. They've had so many holding penalties. I think there's Coach Kayot has more 20-yard plays in his playbook than he does 10-yard plays. And so first and 20 for OBA. Not a foreign place for this OBA offense. This, this is actually a pretty common scenario for them, being behind the chains by 10 yards. So Cheatham in a shotgun formation. Receiver wide to the right side is Liam Berry. Easton comes in motion. They're going to hand it off, and he's going to find a gap. Get upfield. He's going to make some of those yards back. About a six-yard gain there for, for Easton. It's second and 12. That's one thing the Trojans are really good at when they get behind the chains like that. They don't necessarily try and get all 20 yards back in one play. They're good at using all four downs to get positive yardage and, and, and not let that, that penalty affect them. Still several Trojans over there in street clothes. Freshman Jacoby Justice starting at center tonight. Flag comes in. It's going to be uh, offsides on Pond Creek. And so they're going to march that forward five yards, and suddenly the Trojans are ahead of the, cha the chains. So that'll be make it second and nine now. Second, eight and a half, second and nine, right in that area. So the ball outside the 40-yard line. First down was at the 39. So ball almost to the 41. So second and about eight and a half, we'll say, for the Trojans. And they've made up for that penalty on first down. 8.38 to go here in the first period. Your Trojans lead 8-0 to zero on the road at Pond Creek. Two receivers wide to the far side. Elijah Chambers at tight end. Here we go. Sweep to the near side. Cheatham cuts it back up inside. Tripped up by the shoelaces. It's going to be close to a first down. We'll see where they spot it. They spot it on the 49-yard line, so that'll move the chains. No signal yet from the official. He's going to stop with the clock, and they're going to measure this thing. The nose of the ball is on the 49, which is where the first down would be. They're going to bring the chains out. About half the ball is on the 39, the 49 yard line, and the chains are right in the middle of the 49. So we'll see if they get it. That's going to be a first down. Nope. They're saying third and in inches, so just not even a f six inches here for a first down. So with such a short distance, unless there's a penalty or a, or, or a sack or something, this would be four down territory for the Trojans. I don't think they're going to punt it with less than less than a foot uh, to go here. I'd, I'd expect Cheatham to just go straight forward here. You never know. They could do some trickery and throw the ball. But, yeah, it's a snap to Cheatham. He goes forward. It's going to be a first down and then some. Cheatham gets around the edge. 35-30, 25-20, 15-10. Gets caught from behind for the first time. But too late. Touchdown, Trojans. Judd Cheatham into the end zone. OBA scores. Third and inches. Trojans get it around the edge, and they are gone. Touchdown, OBA. 49-yard scamper from the senior, Judd Cheatham. Nice blocking there from the Trojan offensive line. All the receivers were on one side of the formation, so the whole Pond Creek defense had shifted that direction. Trojans bring it around the short side of the field. Judd Cheatham, takes, Judd Cheatham makes one person move and takes off and is gone for the touchdown. That makes it OBA. 14, Pond Creek 0. Two-point two point conversion now for OBA. Flag comes flying in. So a hold, so that'll take it back. And it'll be a two-point conversion from the eight-yard line now.
So Cheatham in the shotgun formation, two receivers to the right side. He's going to roll out to the right. He's looking to throw. Fires it to the end zone, and it is complete. Liam Barry on the reception. Two-point conversion good for the Trojans. That makes the score OBA 16, Pond Creek 0. With about 7.55 to go here in the first quarter, your Trojans lead 16-0. All right, welcome back to OBATrojans.tv. Your Oklahoma Bible Academy Trojans have jumped out to a 16-0 lead. Judd Cheatham has taken back the opening kickoff for a touchdown and then just went for a 49-yard touchdown run on third and one to give your Trojans a 16-0 lead here in the first quarter. 7.55 left to play. Again, beautiful night for football here in Pond Creek, Oklahoma. Obviously, you can probably tell by your stream, beautiful football field here in Pond Creek. And we're underway. Lichty chops it down there again. They're ready for it this time. It's fielded at the 18. Going to be bringing it across the 25, across the 30. Chambers has a hold of him. Bulldogs him still fighting for yardage. Can't get him down. Nice return there. Hit fumble. Ball's on the ground. No signal from the officials yet. The OBA crowd's going crazy over there. The football team's dancing around. Still no signal from the officials. And now they signal OBA ball, so turnover on the kickoff. The OBA Trojans will take over at the 42-yard line. you got to give it up to that young man returning the kickoff. He did not want to go down. He kept fighting, for, kept fighting for yardage, but OBA stripped him of the ball before he went down. So the Trojans take over. First down, OBA. Easton comes in motion. Cheatham's going to take it right up the middle. Not going to be a whole lot of running room there. He does get positive yards, about a three-yard gain for Judd Cheatham. So Cheatham on the carry. Carlos Robinson with the tackle for Pond Creek, making it second and seven for the Trojans. Now we have an official's timeout. So one of the players had some blood, and so he had to come off the field. Substitute comes on. Two receivers split on the near side. Easton in the backfield with Judd Cheatham. Trojans have not put the ball up uh, in regulation. They did it on a two-point conversion, and now Judd Cheatham's going to throw. He looks to swing it out to Easton. Now he looks deep. He's got Barry. It's hauled in. Liam Barry caught it. The nine-yard line. Touchdown, OBA. Liam Barry, great throw from Judd Cheatham. Hits him in stride. The Trojans are on the board again and rolling. Six more points for OBA. Great catch there from the sophomore number one, Liam Barry. Add six more for the Trojans. It is now OBA 22, Pond Creek 0, as the Trojans will line up for yet another two-point conversion. 7.02 to go now in the first period. OBA flexing their muscles early here in this one. Three big strike touchdowns for the Trojans. Hand off to Easton. He gets around the edge. Two-point conversion is good. OBA. So that makes the score OBA 24, Pond Creek 0. Seven minutes to go. 7.02 to go here in the first period. OBA with a quick strike offense that drive. Less than, a, less than a minute comes off the clock since the last touchdown. 
There's some discussion there from the officials, but they're just now signaling that the two-point conversion is good. Personal foul after the play from Pond Creek. Two-point conversion will be good. So we had offsetting personal fouls there, which will re result in no yardage marched off, and the penalty, uh, the two-point conversion will be good. But we do have a player on each team now that has their first personal foul that could come into effect if they have another one later in the game. So we're not even midway through the first period, and your Trojans have flexed their muscles to start this one. It has been the OBA Trojan show tonight. Coach Chris Kayot and the coaching staff wants to have this football team ready for next week in the first round of the playoffs, and they obviously spent this week in preparation. Uh, the Trojans showed up excited and ready to go to work. So Eli Lichty doing a lot of work here in the first period. This will be his third kickoff, even though the Trojans accepted to receive the kick to start the game. Lichty with his third kickoff. They've pooched it to around the 20 all three times tonight, or both times tonight. This will be the third, so we'll see what they do here on the third go-around. So Lichty pooches it a little bit shorter. This time goes to the up-back. He fields it, bobbles it, and just goes down with it. Immediately pounced on by the Trojans, so there'll be no return there. And the ball will be at the 41-yard line where the Panthers will take over first down. No time comes off the clock. So still 7.02. I'm not sure how no time comes off the clock because the ball was in play. The clock runs on kickoffs, or it should, but it didn't on that one. Even if it, not even a second. I mean, it was a short play, but still at least a second should have come off the clock. So Pond Creek, two receivers to the far side, one to the near side, but all of them relatively close to the line. Nobody really wide. He's going to roll out to his right and look to throw the ball. It's an out and up. Liam Berry there in coverage. The ball wobbles in the air a little bit. Picked off by Cheatham. Two flags come flying in. The officials discussing. There was contact between Liam Berry and the receiver, but they were way well past the ball, and Cheatham went under the route and caught it about two yards in front of the receiver. But they're going to call it pass interference. Pass interference against the Trojans. So break there for Pond Creek. Pretty obvious that Pond Creek wants to go to Harrison Stapleton, the senior, number three. He's a, he's a speedster, and it's pretty obvious they want to get him the ball when they can. And so Liam Barry, the sophomore, has his work cut out for him out here. So looking to his right, now comes back to his left. Another double move. They dump it off short. That's he's going to throw that one away. The whole offensive defensive line is in pursuit there of uh, Teft, and so he gets outside the uh, hash marks and just throws it into the stand, uh, throws it into the bench. But it's just about every play we're seeing a double move from Harrison Stapleton out here on the near side. So they're moving Stapleton to the inside now. They have a receiver, number 88, wide out here by the bench. So not having luck to him getting him get it getting it to him on the outside, they move him into the slot here. And there's the snap. Snapleton just going straight deep. Judge Cheatham in coverage. They're going to look for the screen. It's completed. Crows in pursuit. Can't get there. But Wyatt Hofen brings him down just shy of the yard marker. So that'll be a short distance to gain for the first down for Pond Creek. Flag way back behind the play. Usually when it comes from behind the play, it's a hold. But I guess we could see a roughing the passer here. I didn't I didn't see if they hit the quarterback after the throw or not. 
Personal foul. Targeting. So I think that's the fifth penalty on the Trojans. None on Pond Creek yet. Well, they had an offside, so one five-yard penalty on Pond Creek. So Pond Creek's pretty much their total offense has been penalty yardage from the Trojans. So first down, Pond Creek. Knows Taylor the ball is on the 20-yard line, so we'll say it's first down at the 20. It's going to be a screen pass. That's not going to go very far. Maybe a one-yard gain there. Pass is complete to number 11, Ashton Banks. He's a junior. Jackson Crow in there along with Ian Easton to limit that to a one-yard gain. So second and nine for Pond Creek. Receivers go to the far side of the field now, utilizing that, the speed there of uh, Stapleton probably. So they go to the far side of the field and try and open things up for Stapleton, I would guess. So he's going to roll out. He immediately looks out there. Stapleton is covered by Liam Barry. He's in the end zone begging for the ball. Pass goes short to Westrope, and it falls incomplete. And so that'll make it third and nine. It seems pretty obvious from this spot. They're looking for Stapleton anytime they can get it to him. The quarterback looked and looked and looked, waiting for him to come open. Nice coverage from Liam Barry. Followed him all the way into the end zone. And finally, the quarterback dumped it off to the tight end, Titus Westrope, and it falls incomplete. Drop there. Uh, Westrope had two men on him. It, it kind of hit, hit him in the hands, but it would have been a tough catch. So. Third down. I'm going to roll out to the right. Again, they're looking for Stapleton. Cheat him in coverage. Lots of pressure. Now he rolls back to the left. Floated up to the end zone. Oh, deflected by Cheatham. Touchdown, Pond Creek. So nice play there from Stapleton. Good, good play by the Trojan defense. They flushed the quarterback. It was designed to go to the right. And Stapleton went to the right side of the end zone, saw his quarterback scrambling, went, ran all the way across the end zone, and you could just see that uh, Teft was looking for no one else. And Stapleton ran a, the width of the end zone on that play. Yeah, with Judd Cheatham with him, stride for stride, Cheatham was able to jump the route and deflect the ball. Unfortunately for Cheatham, he deflected it up instead of out or sideways or down, and it fell to Stapleton after it came down. So two-point conversion. Lots of movement on the line there. That's got to be something as flags come flying in. So that'll be a false start and push it back five yards. Lots of confusion there on the Pond Creek uh, offensive line. 5.33 to go. This first quarter is going really slowly, and that's because of all the penalties on the Trojans. The clock has stopped a lot. A lot of incomplete passes combined with a lot of penalties makes the game last really long. So this will be a two-point conversion from the eight-yard line. Earlier we saw the Trojans convert one of these, so it can be done. Being close to the end zone does uh, help neutralize Stapleton's speed a little bit. Direct snap is going to be a roll. That's going to be a reverse to Stapleton. He's rolling to his right. He's looking to throw to the quarterback, and it's complete. So they pull out the trick play for their first two-point conversion of the night. So two-point conversion for Pond Creek gets them on the board. That makes the score OBA 24, Pond Creek 8 here in the first quarter. There's 5.32 to go in the game, or in the quarter. Feels like a game. It's been a long time. 5.32 to go. Another meeting from the referees as they huddle up at about the 10-yard line. Not sure what they're discussing there. So the officials huddle is starting to break up.
Last weekend, your OBA cross-country team competed in the state cross-country meet down in Edmond at Edmond Santa Fe High School, and the cross-country team came home with a seventh-place finish in the state in Class 2A. So congratulations to those guys. A lot of hard work. Several of the guys ran their PR, their personal record, at the state meet in the cold and in the rain. So that's an impressive feat to do your PR in bad weather. Several of the Trojans PR'd at the state meet. So congratulations to those guys for uh, their, their successful season, their hard work. So set to kick off, Pond Creek. They're going to squib, but they do not want any part of Judd Cheatham here. Takes a weird bounce. Lichty handles it, and he takes off. There's a hole. Lichty cuts to the outside. This is going to be another touchdown return for the Trojans. Eli Lichty, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, OBA. And the Trojans answer immediately. That onside kick took a nice high hop. Eli Lichty patiently waited for it, scooped it up, made a man miss, and he was gone. Great job from the senior Eli Lichty. Touchdown, OBA. The OBA special teams are getting it done tonight. Great job from Lichty. So that's the way to respond to a touchdown drive is immediately come out and score yourself. Eli Lichty, first time playing varsity football this year, his senior year, and he's making it count. Cheatham takes the snap, hands off to Easton. He tries to get around the edge, still fighting, dies for the end zone. Two-point conversion is good. Ian Easton, lovely second effort there from the senior Ian Easton. That was delightful. We'd love to see that kind of effort from the Trojans. So that'll make it the Trojans 32, Pond Creek 8. The Trojans immediately respond, and that has got to be deflating for Pond Creek to work that hard, get down, and finally get, get a touchdown, although a lot of their yardage was OBA penalties. Uh, probably more than half of their yards were OBA penalties on that drive. They were able to punch it in. And maybe try and gain some semblance of momentum and then immediately OBA seizes all momentum right back. So great job from the Trojan special teams. We'll be right back at obatrojans.tv. Welcome back to Pond Creek, Oklahoma. Your OBA Trojans lead Pond Creek 32 to 8, 522 to go in the first period. It's been a very eventful first period for the Trojans. Eli Lichty, after rambling for a kickoff return touchdown, now set to kick off for OBA. It's going to pooch this one. Fair catch, call, catch called for at the 31 yard line. So it'll be first down Pond Creek at the 31. So first. So Caden Teft in there with the Panther offense. Again, you have to be aware. You have to be aware of where Harrison Stapleton is out here on the near side, number three. He's the speed merchant for Pond Creek. They look for him a lot. It seems like most of their offensive plays are designed where he's the first option, and then they'll look for something else. Trojans so far doing a pretty good job. A lot of double moves going on out here. Now we're going to have a timeout, Pond Creek. So they didn't like what they saw in the Trojans' defensive formation and took a timeout. 5.21 to go here in the first period. OBA Trojans.tv.
All right, OBA fans, welcome back to Pond Creek. As the Panthers come out of the timeout, still the first quarter. So motion. Looks for a double pass. Not going to be there. He's going to throw it and get it out of bounds. That's going to be incomplete. So they flick it out to Stapleton. They use him as a kind of a decoy. That's the second time they've done that, where they've given it to him and then done kind of a double pass. One was a uh, reverse, and then he passed it for a two-point conversion. Now they try the double pass out of the backfield. Trojan's obviously very aware of his speed and his skill, and so when he gets the ball, the, tro the defense moves towards him, and, and I guess Pond Creek is hoping that that will uh, open somebody else up. Cheatham giving Stapleton plenty of cushion here. There's the snap. They're going to look for it short for him. He's going to try and get outside on Barry. Liam Barry gets a hold and is not going to let go. Brought down immediately for no gain. Maybe half a yard gain there. Great play from the sophomore Liam Barry. So Stapleton could not escape the grasp of Liam Barry. The iron fist of Liam Barry. So third and nine for the Panthers. Two receivers to the far side of the formation. That'll be Stapleton and Westrope. And Teft in there at quarterback. Got Ashton Banks in the backfield. Kind of in a slot position. So Banks comes in motion. And we got a false start there. Oh, we got offsides on the defense. So it looks like one of the Trojans got into the neutral zone just a second too early, so that'll make it third and four instead of third and nine. I have a bad angle, so I couldn't really see who, who that would have been, but the Trojan defense is chomping at the bit after giving up that touchdown, so a lot of aggression there. Somebody got just a little bit of a head start, and that'll blow the play dead. So again, Wester opens Stapleton to the far side of the field, Teft at quarterback, and Banks in the backfield with him. He's going to look to swing it out there, and he's just going to try and get it with speed. Makes room, cuts it back upfield. Contact at the 40, falls forward. We'll see if we'll see what the spot says. The hit was at the 40, but the hit came from behind, so it knocked him forward. It might have knocked him into the first down. And they are going to signal first down there. No measurement this time. So nice tackle there from the Trojan defense, but it did come from behind, and so it kind of knocked him forward on impact and gave him, it enabled him to get an extra yard there for the first down. Tight formation here from Pond Creek. Everybody all packed in here compact. Going to look for Westrop in the flat, but he's uh, going to be a quarterback sack. Ian Easton gets in there. Great blitz call from the Trojan coaching staff. Ian Easton comes in from his linebacker position for a... 12-yard loss, it looks like. 12 to 13-yard loss there for Pond Creek. Ian Easton had a hold of, of uh, the quarterback, Teft. Uh, Teft didn't want to go down, and Easton reached up and tried to swat the ball away. Um, and that's when Teft decided to think better of it and, and went on down. So nice play there from Ian Easton coming in from his linebacker position to make the tackle. Now, now the Trojans in a much, much more wide uh, formation here defensively, more of a prevent at second and... 22, 23, something like that. 314 to go as the clock ticks. They're going to swing it out wide, and it's going to be positive yardage. They're still going to be behind the chains. That's going to make it third and about 13. Ashton Banks on with the reception there. So third and 13. Hofen in there making yet another stop at the cornerback position, doing a good job in his first game back. I know why it's excited to be back out on the field after missing the last couple of games with a cast on his arm. Nick Beckman runs to the sideline, getting, getting a little break there. The Trojans go with three linebackers and two down linemen for this formation. Three receivers here to the near side. Plenty of time, not a lot of pressure. Crow applies a little pressure. They're looking over the middle, and that falls incomplete, way out of the reach of Westro. Westro has his hands up as if he's looking for a call there, not really anything to, to call. That, and there's no way that ball was catchable. It was 10 feet over his head. And so that'll make it fourth and 13. Doesn't look like a punt formation here. They got three receivers in a bunch here on the near side of the field. Now Banks moves into more of a slot close to the line of scrimmage. S 
flushed out of the and a flag comes in, but that's not going to be enough for the first down. As he's forced out of bounds, it'll be inter interesting to see what the call is. Where the flags came in, it would be it would look like a hold, but they did not get the first down yardage. So we'll see if they accept the penalty. So it is going to be holding against Pond Creek. Decision time for the OBA coaching staff. Do you push them back 10 more yards on fourth down? Uh, maybe they punt it and give Judge Cheatham a chance for a return, or do you just take the turnover on downs and go from the 50? Let's see what they decide. Looks like they're just going to decline the penalty, take the ball at the 49-yard line, so first down OBA in Pond Creek territory. 2.20 to go here in the first period. OBA has the ball, uh, looking to expand on this lead. 24-point lead for the Trojans here still in the first quarter. So here comes the Trojan offense. Judd Cheatham in the shotgun. Ian Easton next to him. It's going to be a handoff to Easton up the middle. He has room to run. Breaks the tackle. Spins out of it. First down, OBA. Brought down at the 34-yard line. Nice run, Ian Easton. Ian Easton on the So first down OBA, nice run there from the senior Ian Easton. 152 to go in the first period as the clock continues to tick. Liam Berry and Eli Lichty wide to the near side of the field. Only one guy out here in coverage. Jim's going to roll to his right. He's looking for Barry. He's going to dump it down to Ian Easton. He's going to have first down and then some. Makes a man miss into the 15 10. Over the five, dives for the end zone. He's going to be marked out of bounds at the two-and-a-half yard line, it looks like. Nice play there from the Trojans. They were looking deep for Liam Berry again. Coverage was there, so they dump it off to the to the running back in the flat, and Ian Easton makes makes a man miss. Looks like Stapleton had a beat on him, but Ian Easton planted the foot, made a cut, and then scampered downfield. First and goal for the Trojans at the eh, two-and-a-half yard line, we'll say. A minute 24 to go here in the first period. So Cheatham shuttles the play in from the coaching staff. Lichty in the backfield. Cheatham's going to hand it off end around here. Touchdown OBA. Ian Easton into the end zone. Hand off to Ian Easton. Strolls into the end zone. A walk in the park coming across the formation. Hand off to Easton. Touchdown OBA. And the Trojans are rolling. So that makes the score OBA 40, Pond Creek 8, still here in the first quarter. So two-point conversion crew in there. Lichty in the backfield. Easton again to the far right, coming in formation in motion again. They hand it to Lichty up the middle this time, grinding forward. Two-point conversion is good. Eli Lichty and the Trojans add to their score 42-8. to eight with about a minute left, a minute 16 to go here in the first period. Nice drive there offensively from the Trojans. No penalties. Efficient offense. Nice job by the Trojans. The offensive line doing a great job making holes for the running backs. Nick Beckman uh, in there pounding on the offensive line. Jackson Crow in there. The freshman, Jacoby Justice, in there starting at center due to the injury of Harrison Crow, the senior Harrison Crow on the sideline. And so the, the, the freshman, Jacoby Justice, is actually the third center for the Trojans because uh, another senior, Thomas Campbell, went down with an injury two weeks ago. So Jacoby Justice has to step in. The freshman stepping in and doing a great job helping blast holes in that Trojan offensive line for the running game to be so effective. Nice job from the line. So, Cheatham into the end zone twice. Lichty into the end zone. Liam Berry with a touchdown reception. Ian Easton with a touchdown. The Trojans are spreading it around tonight. Everyone getting into the act so far. I think the uh, player of the game so far would be the Trojan special teams with 
two touchdowns and a fumble, forced fumble and a fumble conversion all on special teams. So the player of the game in the first quarter is the Trojans special teams doing a great job. And so let's see what the Trojans have in store on this kickoff with a minute 16 to go in the first period. So Lichty set to kick off again, pooches this one, another fair catch, and that's going to be fielded at the 34-yard line. So it'll be first down, Pond Creek at the 34, trying to make something happen before the end of the first period. Pond Creek's going to try and seize back some of that momentum that is firmly on the side of the Trojans right now. Ian Easton, who scored that last Trojan and uh, Trojan touchdown, is a... Uh, Congratulations to him, a National Merit Scholar finalist, so not just an athlete. Ian Easton getting the work done in the classroom, too, as are all the Trojans, as academics are a high priority at OBA. So going to roll out, looking to pass. Chambers in, in pursuit there. They're going to call that a catch. Tiptoeing the sideline is Stapleton. So Teft, another good job. Rolling out. Extending the play. Making the game last a little bit, the play last a little bit longer, giving the receivers time to come open. I'd look for a double move here from Stapleton after that short pass route. So uh, I was wrong. Handoff up the middle to Banks. He's going to get positive yardage here. About a two and a half, maybe three yard gain. will bring up third and short. Third and short for Pond Creek. Third, third and about a yard. 53 seconds to go here in the first period. Banks goes in motion. Now stops behind the quarterback. Trying to get a hard count, trying to get a first down the easy way. Trojans don't bite, so no one jumps off sides. Nice discipline there. Teft, smart play, though. So as we hand off to Banks, the ball's bobbled. Now he's uh, scrambling, trying to get around the end. Ho uh, flag comes flying in, so that play's going to come back. Wyatt Hofen broke in behind the line of scrimmage and took a hit uh, in the back there. And we might have a hold on the end of the line as well. Uh, the, bob the bobble on the handoff. Uh, through the timing of the playoff, and he had to try and bounce it outside, and the Trojan defense was all over that. It would have been stopped for a loss, but I'm thinking uh, we're going to have a hold on that thing as, as the Trojans were grabbed a hold of and un unable to uh, make the stop. So they're going to march that one back, penalty on Pond Creek, and they're going to march it back, so that'll make it third and long now. That's a 15-yarder, so as a personal foul. Making it third and 16 now. Trojan defense shuffling around a little bit there. Pond Creek gave him plenty of time to, to look at the formation and see what's going on. It's going to look like a tunnel screen there for Stapleton. He's going to get positive yardage, but not many. He's brought down at about the 32-yard line, shy of even the original line of scrimmage. So that'll make it fourth and 11 for Pond Creek, fourth and 12 even. A lot of personnel change there for Pond Creek. I'd imagine they're going to kick this one away. That'll be the end of the first period. So one period ends. Your OBA Trojans lead Pond Creek 40-8 to eight after one period. Long period there, lots of incomplete passes, lots of penalties. So the clock stopped a lot. So this first period took almost 50 minutes. But the Trojans made every minute of action count as they scored every way possible uh, and jump out to a 40-8 to eight lead here in the first period. So we'll be back for the second period here on OBATrojans.tv.
Welcome back to OBHTrojans.tv, coming to you live from Pond Creek, Oklahoma, home of the Pond Creek Panthers. And in case you're just tuning in, you missed the show because OBA jumped out in the first period. Opening kickoff goes back for a touchdown. We have Pond Creek punting to start the second period, so special teams start both periods. So the punt is just a line drive, goes straight into the back of one of the linemen and squibs out to about the, I guess, 41-yard line. Kind of an odd play. Obviously didn't get a lot of elevation on the punt, and it just went straight into the back of one of the offensive linemen and then kind of squirted forward about 25 yards. So the Trojans just stayed away from it, didn't try and field it. Really the way the Trojans are doing on special teams today, that might be a good play. Uh, for Pond Creek just to keep it away from the Trojans and not let anything happen there. So first down OBA. So before the play can get underway, the Panthers are in the neutral zone, making it first and five now for OBA. So really the only penalties we're seeing from the Panthers' side of the ball are, are offsides penalties. Uh, that's the third one on Pond Creek so far tonight. So first and five, OBA. Judge Cheatham getting the play signal from uh, Coach Chris Kayot and heads into the huddle to communicate that to the rest of the team. Trojans doing some substituting, getting some guys some extra minutes. Ian Burnett in there to take a couple of snaps on the offensive line. Hand off to Lichty. Looking for a hole, not really anywhere to go, and he stopped for no gain there. So Eli Lichty with the carry. Been a good night so far for number nine, though. He's got a kickoff return for a touchdown and a two-point conversion. So Lichty having a good night for the senior. Snap to Cheatham. He's going to roll out to the near side. Lots of blockers out front. Cheatham cuts it back upfield. It's going to be positive yardage. Struggles forward. It's going to be just shy of the first down. About a three-yard gain for Judd Cheatham. And that'll make it fourth and one for the Trojans, maybe? Or third and one. I'm sorry. The penalty. And then Lichty carried and then that play. So third and one for the Trojans. Third and short. This is the uh, same scenario in the first quarter where the Trojans had third and short and they busted a 49-yard touchdown run. Uh, so... Pond Creek's got to be on their toes here as the Trojans oftentimes in uh, short possession plays end up making them long plays. So third and short for the Trojans. Let's see what they do. Still very little breeze blowing tonight. It's kind of sporadic. So not a lot of wind. Easton comes in motion. They're going to hand it to Easton. Lichty out in front to block. Easton cuts up inside. Gets a bounce to the outside. Brought down shoestring tackle by Stapleton. Brought down at the 26-yard line. First down OBA. Nice run there from the senior Ian Easton. Eli Lichty out in front blocking. Nice play from, from Lichty as well. So the ball at the 26. Trojan first down. 9.51 to go in the second period. Easton comes in motion again. Cheatham keeps this one right up the middle. Jump cut, tries to get it outside, now cuts back inside, and he's gone. Going to be a touchdown, OBA, Judd Cheatham. Several Panthers got their hands on him, but no one could bring him down. Judd Cheatham with two nice moves, cuts outside, and bounces it back to the inside. Touchdown, OBA, Cheatham with his third of the night. So Trojans on the board again. That touchdown will make it 46-8. to eight. as the Trojans come out of the huddle for the two-point conversion. Cheatham's going to hand that, that off to Easton. He's going to bounce to the outside. A flag comes flying in, so that'll, that one will come back, and the Trojans will have two-point conversion from farther back.
That's going to be a hold on Elijah Chambers off the end there. So the Trojans will have a, a two-point conversion from the, looks like the 14-yard line. 13-yard line, I guess. Your score is 46 to 8 with 9.33 to go here in the first half. Second quarter action coming to you from Palm Creek, Oklahoma. Cheatham takes a snap, looking to throw. Plenty of time. Finds Chambers over the middle, slips through his hands. Two-point conversion is no good. That's probably the first play where the Trojans will use the phrase no good uh, on the night. So the pass is incomplete. The conversion does not succeed. So that will make the score OBA 46, Pond Creek 8. We'll be right back here at obatrojans.tv. So we are back. Trojan special teams back on the field. Eli Lichty set to kick off again, this time kicking north to south. Pooches this one nice and high. Going to field it at the 19 or 21-yard line by Stapleton. Looking for room. Trojan special teams have him surrounded, bring, bringing him down at the 36. First down, Pond Creek. So first down, Pond Creek. As the Panther offense looking to get some some kind of momentum here against this stiff Trojan defense. Caden Teft in at quarterback. He's going to drop back looking to pass. Immediately he's under pressure. He's going to break it and go for the run. Tries to cut it back into the middle. Stiff arm gets away. Shoestring attempt by Lichty. No good. Finally forced out of bounds. He ran probably 30 or 35 yards on that play, but uh, gained about seven. So... A lot of side-to-side -side running there to avoid tackles by Teft, uh, the junior quarterback. Very elusive there on that play for Pond Creek, making it second and four from the 43-yard line. Again, he's under pressure. Again, flushed out of the pocket. A flag comes in. And steps out of bounds after about a 15-yard gain. Flag downfield, so that's probably going to be a hold on the Trojan defense. Yep. That's going to be declined from Pond Creek. So once again, most of the big plays from Pond Creek are coming via the penalty on OBA. Two receivers wide to the far side of the field, one on the near side. Teft in the backfield by himself. 9.04 to go here in the, in the uh, second period as we wind towards halftime. So Teft back to pass yet again. They're going to go up top to Westrope. Forced out of bounds by Hofen. Hoffman. 
So it'll be first and goal for Pond Creek. Officials time out here. Quite a large size advantage there in that matchup with Westrope standing what looks to be 6'4", 6'5", and White Hofen at about 5'10", or maybe even 5'9". So they just kind of put the ball up high, a little bit of contact, a little bit of hand jockeying there from both the cornerback and the receiver, and Westrope's able to go up and pull it in. So first and goal at the six-yard line. A lot of motion here. This is the play they messed up on and had Legal formation. Stapleton trying to get around to the edge, and he's going to get in. Two-point conversion is good for Pond Creek. We've seen that formation before. They tried to run it on their last two-point conversion uh, and jumped off sides. They came back and ran the exact same thing again. Obviously, they want, it, they want the ball in Stapleton's hands as much as they can. So Pond Creek doubles their tally here, or adds to their tally, sorry, making it 14 to 46 as they line up for the two-point conversion. Rolling out to the right is Teft. Cheatham there in pursuit. He's not going to get there as all the Trojans are there to meet him. Cheatham slows him down, and the rest of the uh, Trojan defense Hunts him, hunts him down and brings him to the ground. 8.46 to go here in the first period. Your Trojans lead 46-14. to 14. Coming to you from Palm Creek. So Trojans already locked up the district championship with their win last week but would like to finish off district play undefeated here tonight at Fawn Creek and kind of put an exclamation point on the regular season as they prepare to go into the playoffs. The Trojans will host a home game next week in the first round of the playoffs. Opponent is still to be determined. And it will depend a little bit on what happens tonight, both here at Fawn Creek and in other games around the state. A little bit of a breeze starting to pick up here this evening, uh, midway through the second period. Well, the last time Pond Creek scored, they tried an onside kick, and it hopped up, and Eli Lichty took it to the house for a touchdown for an immediate Trojan response. Let's see what happens this time. Pond Creek has kicked off twice tonight. Both of them have ended up in their own end zone in the Trojan scoring points. So we'll see if the uh, Pond Creek coaching staff has a solution to that. I'd be surprised to see him kick it deep to Cheatham. And going on side last time didn't work so well. So we'll see what Pond Creek does. Maybe a pooch kick. Kind of running out of options at this point. if you're trying to keep the Trojans from scoring. So going to be another onside kick. It's going to take another high hop. This one fielded at the 38-yard line by Barry. He's going to bring it forward. A flag comes in at the end of the play. He's brought down at the 47-yard line. Flag immediately comes in. No signal yet. And it's going to be a block in the back on the Trojans. A lot of penalty yardage tonight for OBA. They've got to be over 100 yards at this point. That's They've had 9 or 10 penalties, and none of them have been small ones. They've all been 10 yards or more. Pond Creek's only had three flags tonight. All of them have been offsides. So first down OBA, starting at their own 36. Big jump there from Pond Creek, no flag. Cheatham busted up the middle, so it's going to be positive yardage, about an eight-yard gain for the senior Judd Cheatham. Big jump there from the Pond Creek defensive line. I guess he didn't get across the neutral zone. Cheatham on the carry. Woo! Harrison Stapleton trying to sway 
So second and about one and a half for the Trojans as the clock continues to tick with 8.21 to go here in the first half. Trojans opt for an extra lineman, and Liam Berry gets a little bit of break over there on the sideline. Ian Easton wide to the far side of the field. Eli Lichty in the backfield with Cheatham. Right up the middle for Judd Cheatham. That's going to be a Trojan first down and then some. About a five-yard gain for OBA. First down, Trojans. Trojans with just some power running there. Nothing fancy. Snap it to the quarterback, and he follows the center, Jacoby Justice, right up the center of the field. So first down Trojans, Easton comes in motion. Cheatham's going to follow the motion man, cuts it inside, makes a man miss. Going to be positive yardage, takes a negative yard, takes a negative yardage play and turns it into positive yardage. His contact was first made in the backfield. Still able to gain three yards on that, so. So second and seven. Trojans taking their time here on offense. No hurry up. As you might remember last season, the Trojans ran a lot of no huddle offense. This year, not so much. Really tight formation. Everybody bunched in here together for OBA. Cheatham with the snap. Fakes the handoff. Turns it upfield. Breaks through. He's, he's going to run. It's all about speed now. He's, rolling, he's pulling away. Touchdown, OBA. Judd Cheatham gets another one. 42-yard run. Touchdown, OBA. So the Trojans respond once again. That one goes right up the middle, kind of a play-action run. They face the handoff to Lichty, and off he goes. Big hole there, blasted by the Trojan offensive line. And Judd Cheatham takes it to the house once again for another OBA score, making the score OBA 52, Pond Creek 14. So here comes the tro Trojans for a two-point conversion. Easton comes in motion, hands it to Lichty up the middle. He dives for the goal line, and it's good. Two-point conversion to Eli Lichty. The Trojans tack two more onto their tally, making it 54-14. A 40-point Trojan lead with 6.27 to go here in the first half. Trojans lead 52-14. to Judd Cheatham flexing his muscles now. But several Trojans tallying scores here tonight. It's not just the Judd Cheatham show tonight. Is Easton's been in the end zone. Lichty's been in the end zone. Barry's been in the end zone. The Trojans spreading the wealth. But as always, the focal point is Judd Cheatham. Obvi it's obvious Harrison Stapleton is the focal point of the Pond Creek offense just as Judd Cheatham is the focal point for OBA's offense. But tonight, it looks like the Trojans have done a little bit better job of spreading around the wealth and uh, utilizing other tools uh, for their offense. So Eli Lichty, that right leg of Eli Lichty is getting a lot of work tonight here in the first half. And the Trojan special teams going back to work. The past couple of Lichty kicks have been short pooch kicks that have been uh, fair caught by Pond Creek. Let's see what we do this time. So Lichty kicks this one a little bit deeper. That's going to put Stapleton all the run fielded at the 20. Trying to come back across the grain to the near side of the field. Stapleton upended by Judd Cheatham. Flipped upside down and lands flat on his back. That was a collision. The two fastest guys on the field just collided. And it looks like Stapleton got the worst of that one. That was, that was a highlight reel play. Stapleton was running full speed. Running towards the north. 
Cheatham was running full speed towards the south and just got a little bit lower and upended Stapleton. Sent him flying, feet pointing straight up in the air. That was an that was a collision, folks. That was that was something to see. And the stadium has gone quiet. Every we all hope Stapleton uh, is okay. We'd love to see that young man get up now. Hopefully, just with that collision, it was just a momentary stinger type situation. But Judge Cheatham's a solid young man, and any collision with him is going to hurt. Stapleton was moving momentarily. Now he's getting a drink, so he is moving. He has taken his helmet off. But the stadium has gone quiet, and we, we sure hope Stapleton's okay. He's a fine young man. I've met him a couple times in other contexts, obviously not on the football field, but in other contexts at track meets and at basketball games and things like that. He's a, he's a really quality young man. And so obviously you don't ever want to see somebody down like this. We're going to take a break here and we'll be right back at obhtrojans.tv. Okay, so as you can see during the break, Stapleton did get up and leave the field with the help of the coaches. Be curious to see what the uh, pond, how the Pond Creek offense operates with him not on the field because he's clearly a focal point of what they do. So 6.19 to go here in the half. Pond Creek takes over possession at the 41-yard line after their turn from Stapleton. So there's the snap. It's going to be a QB keeper, and the Trojan defense is all over that. The whole Trojan defensive line just swarmed in there. That was supposed to be a quarterback draw, but the hole just never materialized. I'm not sure where it was designed to go. It was definitely designed to be a run for, for Caden Teft, but the offensive line didn't kind of open any kind of hole or anything, and eventually they almost let the Trojan defensive line go like it was a screen pass or something, but Teft was definitely running that ball, and it's going to be a six-yard, five, six-yard loss for Pond Creek. So Teft back at it again. Davis comes in motion. It's going to be another pass rolling out to his right. Westrope slips and falls, so no receiver there. So Teft's going to have to keep it just step out of bounds after about a two-yard gain. Aston Banks was uh, the receiver in the flat over here on the near side. Definitely a pass that was designed to go to Westro, but as he planted his foot to cut out on an out route, his feet just slipped, slipped out from under him, and he just fell down um, and really didn't even look like he was trying to get back up, and so Teft had nowhere to go. So third and long here, behind the chains here, third and 13 for the Panthers. That's going to hand that one off to Banks up the middle, and that's going to be a short game, maybe two-yard game. So fourth and nine for Pond Creek. Doesn't look like they're even going to mess around with the punt. The, the last punt was not very successful as it, it hit one of their offensive linemen. So I assume the coaching staff figures we might as well go for it at this point. So fourth and nine. Oh, that was motion. He was running towards the line, but no flag. Tep looking to pass, but he's under pressure, scrambling, just buying time, buying time. Finally lost it out there, and it's going to be caught by Westro. Forced out of bounds by Wyatt Hofman. That's just a case of a, a good job by a quarterback waiting and waiting and waiting, making, extending the play, 
it's it's impossible to guard a receiver forever. Uh, the Trojan secondary was in good coverage position for a long time, but Westro finally worked his way to an open spot, and Teft found him. So nice play there from Teft and Westro to kind of uh, extend the play and make something happen. First down, Pond Creek. Yeah, nothing there. Nick Beckman that takes the handoff, and Nick Beckman drops the running back for a loss. Cooper Kelso on the carry, the sophomore, with nowhere to go. Nick Beckman saw that one coming and was two yards deep in the backfield when the running back got the ball. So that's going to be a loss, second and 12 for Pond Creek. So Pond Creek taking their time, 3.58 to go here in the half. The Trojans lead 54-14. Snap to Teft, still mo motion there, nothing called. They're going deep, looking, and that's going to be deflected. Cheatham and Barry collide, or Cheatham and, and Hofen collide. Both of them deflect the ball and knock it away, so that'll bring up a third down. Big collision there, Judge Cheatham. Is an equal opportunity collider here tonight. Nice hustle from both Trojan defensive backs trying to get that deflection. A little bit of a collision, but it falls incomplete, so job well done. Third and 12 for Pond Creek. So I'm guessing they're going to look for Westrope again here. That's way overthrown. That's going to be incomplete. Westrope turned that in, in inside, uh, and the quarterback just threw it straight up the sideline. Westrope gesturing to the quarterback in frustration. So that'll be fourth and 12. Pond Creek went forward on fourth down in their own territory on the last dry, on the last series of downs. So I'm imagining they'll go for it again here. On fourth and 12, 3.38 to go in the first period. In the first half, I'm sorry, folks. So Westrope in the slot. Everybody in close here for Pond Creek this time. Teff back to pass. Again, looking for Westrope. This one's deep. Feet got tangled up. I don't really know that that's anybody's fault, but they're going to call pass interference, and you have to expect that call when you're on the road. The Westrope ran up the back of Hofen. So once again, penalties get OBA. So first down, Pond Creek, 3.32 to go here in the first half. The Singleton out, it's a steady diet of deep passes to Westrope, and they're, they're hoping for deep completions or pass interference calls. We're going to scramble around the end there, and that's going to be a negative yardage play once again. So once again, they go for a run on first down, and it's stopped for a loss, putting Pond Creek behind the chains. I would expect three consecutive deep passes now from Pond Creek, because that's just kind of been their uh, M.O. on this drive. So they're going to look for Westrope down this near side, trying to pick on the size advantage with Wyatt Hofen. So Westrope's just going to go straight down the sideline here, I would anticipate. And they're going to lob it up there and hope that his size can uh, give them the advantage and either get a completion or a pass interference call. That seems to be their whole strategy at this point in the half. So here comes the pass, lobbing it up to Westrope. Two Trojans in coverage. That's going to be incomplete and out of bounds. Helmet came off, so now Westrop's going to have to come out of the game for a play. Making it third and 12. There's a flag on the play, and it's going to be holding against Pond Creek. Let's see what Coach Kayot and the staff decide. They're going to take the penalty, so it'll still be second down. Penalty. 
So curious to see what Pond Creek does now. Ball on the 45, and they have to get down to the 23. So second and 22 for Pond Creek. Westrope on the bench with his helmet having fallen off on the last play. He's got to sit out this play. Going to be a draw right up the middle. It's going to be a nice running play. Elijah Chambers on the tackle, bringing him down at the 35. So about a 10-yard gain. You know, make it third, right, pretty much right where it was, third and 12. So really, the Trojans could have de declined that penalty, and it would have been third and 12 anyway. So kind of a wash there on that one. And Trojans jumped. So offsides on OBA. They're going to march off five yards. Still third down, but now it's third and third and seven instead of third and twelve. Third and seven. Might look for Teft or Banks running on this one. But nope, he's going to throw it to the far side. As Singleton's back in there. So Singleton, good to see him back in the game. Forced out of bounds. So good to see Stapleton back up and playing. Never want to see somebody hurt. So that'll be first down Pond Creek. Minute 45 to go here in the first half. Blitz from the Trojans. Going to be a pass to the end zone. Touchdown, Stapleton. There is a flag. I guess there's a possibility he'd be an offensive pass interference, but I wouldn't expect that. I'd be shocked if they called offensive pass interference here. That didn't, I mean, there was contact, but it didn't look like much. They're going to call holding. <laughs> They're going to call holding on the Trojans there. Uh, so. So holding is called. I'm not sure how that's a hold, but it, it's really immaterial. It was a touchdown either way. I kind of thought, if anything, it would be an offensive pass interference with with all the hand jockeying that was going on. But that'll move the score up to 54-20 to 20 here in the second quarter with about a minute and a half left. So again, those, that motion is going to roll him out to the right. It's going to be quarterback, pass it back to the quarterback, looking to the end zone, incomplete. So that pass is incomplete, overthrown and out of bounds. They like that end around where they pitch it to Stapleton and then he throws the double pass. It's the second or third time they've tried that. Use his speed as sort of a decoy and then let him throw the ball. So 139 to go here in the first half. Your Trojans lead 54 to 20, a 34 point lead for the Trojans. A minute 39 to go. Definitely enough time for the Trojans to make something happen before halftime. This quick strike Trojan offense has shown what it's capable of. Not to mention the Trojan special teams with two touchdowns of their own. So can't go anywhere just yet this close to halftime. Trojans with a 30 point lead. 34 point lead actually. So we'll see what Pond Creek does with this kickoff as two different Trojans have take, now taken kickoffs to the house. Really so far tonight, the Trojans' biggest nemesis has been the, the penalty flag. If they can clean up the penalties, 
they could uh, finish this thing with a 40 po 45 point mercy rule, but the penalties are, are enabling Pond Creek to march down the field. I don't have the official stats, but the penalty yards and the actual yards earned are probably pretty similar. So here goes the kickoff. Another onside. Going to be fielded and immediately downed by the Trojans at the 48-yard line. Smart play there from Elijah Chambers just to fall on it. The ball was low. It wasn't going to take a big hop like it did for, for Eli Lichty. So he just falls on it there. It's going to be first down Trojans on the 49-yard line with a minute 39 to go. Plenty of time to make something happen here for the Trojan offense before halftime. So Cheatham comes in motion with Barry quarterback, and he's going to go around the far end, cuts it back to the middle. Now he cuts it back, heading for the near side, trying to get yardage. It's going to be a big gain either way. Now cuts it to the middle again, makes a move, steps out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Big run from Judge Cheatham. First time the Trojans have shown that formation tonight where Liam Barry's at quarterback and Cheatham is in the slot. So ball at the 22-yard line for OBA now definitely within striking distance. Cheatham rolls out to his right looking to pass. He has Lichty short. Elijah Chambers comes back to the ran all the way in the zone, came back to about the 10-yard line. The pass is complete. Liam Berry and Pond Creek Panther down on the ground there. down on the field so hey Russell my eyes aren't so bad can you see our car down there across the street no I can't do you want me to go down the second line yeah half time please I can go right now when you go out ask them if you need a stamp or something to get back in don't go out if they're not going to let you back in So he's up now. Good to see. Never want to see a, a kid down on the ground. That's Cooper Kelso. He's the one who made the tackle. He's not coming out of the game. I thought if the game stopped and everyone came out on the field, you had to come out of the game. But evidently not. Okay, now here he comes. Now he's coming off the field. So first down Trojans at the... Looks like the 12-yard line. Liam Berry wide to the near side. Eli Lichty in the slot. Ian Easton in the slot on the opposite side. And Elijah Chambers at wide receiver on the far side. Cheatham back to pass. Steps up. Immediately gets rushed. Runs into his offensive lineman. Bounces off. Gets positive yardage. Cuts it in. In the five-yard line. Touchdown, OBA. Judd Cheatham making men miss. Doing what Judd Cheatham does. Ran right into the back of Jacoby Justice, but just bounced off and kept going. Touchdown, OBA. Cheatham in the end zone again for the Trojans. Getting a quick touchdown before halftime to increase their lead. 103 to go in the half, and that makes it OBA 60, Pond Creek 20. So OBA lining up for the uh, two point conversion. Here come the Trojans. Lichty in the backfield, Easton and in the wide to the far side of the field. Going to be a handoff to Lichty up the middle. And he's going to stroll into the end zone. Two-point conversion is good for the Trojans. That makes the score OBA 62, Pond Creek 20. So 42-point lead for the Trojans as we head towards halftime. 103 to go here in the first quarter, or the first half. 
42 point lead. So the Trojans will want to hold Pond Creek here, not give up anything in the last minute of the half. Pond Creek will get the ball coming out of halftime to start the second half. So obviously the Trojans hoping their defense can get stiff right here to end the half and then get a stop to start the second half. So Eli Lichty is going to kick one more away here in the first half. It's been a scoring onslaught from the Trojans tonight at Pond Creek. Temperature drops a little bit. It's still right around 60 degrees here on the northern plains of Oklahoma. So all you OBA fans tuning in from elsewhere, thanks for tuning in to OBATrojans.tv. Big thanks to our sponsors who make this stream possible. Lichty with the, the pooch kick, fielded, and it's the ball's loose. It's on the ground. No signal from the officials, but it looks like the Trojans have it. And the Trojans have the ball at the 41-yard line. They're still in business with a minute three to go in the half. Wyatt Hofen recovers the fumble. That's the second special teams fumble recovery for the Trojans here in the first half. So with a minute three to go, the Trojans have a chance to end this thing at halftime if they can go down and score some points here with a minute three left. So here comes Judd Cheatham in the Trojan offense. Eli Lichty in the backfield. Ian Easton wide to the left. Cheatham takes the snap and rolls out to the left side looking for daylight. Pops it outside. He has room to run. It's going to be a first down, and he steps out of bounds. That'll stop the clock after a first down First down Trojans at the 30-yard line. 55 seconds left here in the half. So now two receivers wide to the far side of the field, tied in here on the near side. Cheatham is going to be a double pass of their own. Cheatham steps up, fires it down the middle to Chambers. Hauled in. Touchdown, Elijah Chambers and OBA. Judd Cheatham put that on the money. Double coverage on Elijah Chambers. Double coverage, and he pulls it in. Touchdown, OBA. It will make it 68-20 to here in the first half. Nice play there from Coach K out and the coaching staff. Drew that one up. Took a page out of Pond Creek's playbook there, having a uh, handoff turn into a deep pass. So it's 68-20, to 20, your Trojans lead, with less than a minute to go in the first half. Liam Berry coming wide to the near side. Cheatham in the backfield with Easton. Eli Lichty in the slot. Going to hand it off. Cheatham's going to keep it now. Going to go right up the middle, dive for the end zone. Two-point conversion is good, making your score OBA 70, Pond Creek 20 with 44 seconds to go before halftime. So here come the Trojan special teams yet again. It has been a night for special teams here for OBA. Two touchdowns for the special teams. Two recovered fumbles for the special teams. The MVP tonight, I would say, is the OBA special teams because they've done an amazing job. It's been delightful to watch them. So 44 seconds to go. Obviously, the Trojans want to, to hang on here and not give up any points before halftime as their lead's over 45, and if they can maintain this lead into halftime, that'll be the ball game. So the uh, kick is fielded at the 35, 
and it'll be Pond Creek ball at the 35-yard line. No time comes off the clock because of the fair catch. So 44 seconds to go. Also like to remind everybody that after the band performs on the field, the seniors will do their walk. Immediately after the band performs. So Trojans in the eight-man version of a prevent defense here. Stapleton calling for other receivers to move around. Play clock down to 12. So Westrop and Stapleton both here on the near side of the field. Got Cheatham and Hofen over here along with Easton. So we're going to be a rollout. We're going to throw it to this side of the field. It's going to be screen pass to Stapleton. He's going to get around to the sideline. Dances around, makes a man miss, and steps out of bounds right at the 50. So it'll be first down with 36 seconds to go. So first down for the Panthers at the 49. Three receivers to the top side of the field now. The wide side, the Panthers using the wide side of the field just about every time. Going to be a blitz there from Chambers. They're going to get rid of it to Stapleton, and he flies out of bounds at about the 44. Short of the first down, 30 seconds to go in the half. Looks like as Stapleton went out of bounds, he got tangled up with the chain gang there and fell awkwardly, but he's up and back on the field. So about a four-yard gain, second and six, 30 seconds to go. The Trojans need to make a tackle and keep them in bounds here to keep that clock running. West Open Stapleton on the near side now, so they're using the long side of the field to try and use their size and speed advantage out here on the edge. They're, they're not using the short side of the field at all. Sprinting for the sideline, and he's brought down. Oh, they stopped the clock anyway. 22 seconds to go. Ashton Banks with the completion, about a two-yard gain there. Now it's third down. Curious to see what Pond Creek does here. Do they focus on getting a first down with 22 seconds to go, or do they throw with the length of the field? Again, three receivers to the wide side of the field. Nobody on the short side of the field. Pass to Westrope is completed. He's brought down. That'll stop the clock for the first down with 16 seconds to go. Maybe, just maybe, there's some generous clock operation going on here as only four seconds came off the clock on that play. So timeout Pond Creek with 16 seconds to go in the half. The ball on the OBA 36-yard line. Just a reminder, OBA fans, the Trojans have locked up a district championship and will be playing at home next week. So they will host a home playoff game next Friday night at Commitment Field. Stay tuned to see who their opponent's going to be. That will be going out via the normal OBA communication sites, obatrojans.com, obatrojans.tv, I'm sorry, oklahomabible.com, things like that. Love, love to thank our corporate sponsors. That's, what's make, that's what makes athletics at OBA possible. Athletics do not come out of the general budget at OBA, so your tuition costs and things like that do not cover athletics. But our, our students are able to participate in sports without having to pay extra because of our corporate sponsors. Folks like Jansen GMC who are bringing you our live stream tonight. No Man's Land Beef Jerky, another great sponsor for the Trojans. As here we go on first down. So looking wide to the, to the outside. Pass is complete. It's going to be a flea flicker and forced out of bounds after a short gain. Six seconds came off the clock on that one. So there's ten seconds to go here in the half. little trickery there, uh, which has kind of been a staple in the Pond Creek playbook tonight, trying just about anything to get yards. Pass, short pass complete to Ashton Banks, and then he does a flea flicker and pitches it to Stapleton. At some point, Stapleton's going to go flying towards the end zone. Maybe on this play, maybe the next one. Steps up into the pocket. He's trying to buy time. 
Stapleton coming back to the ball now. They're looking for him. It's going to be overthrown, incomplete, and that'll be the half. That's the ball game. Time expires. And so that'll be the ball game with the 45-point mercy rule. Your Oklahoma Bible Academy Trojans, 70, Pond Creek, 20. So Oklahoma Bible Academy, 70, Pond Creek Panthers, 20. And this will be a short night for the Trojans. The Trojan MVP tonight is the Trojan special team. They, they did an amazing job tonight. Two touchdowns on special teams, two fumble recoveries on special teams. Um, the offense did, did some great things. Multiple Trojans found the end zone tonight. Cheatham obviously finds the end zone several times. Elijah Chambers with a pass caught. Eli, um, Eli Lichty gets into the end zone on a kickoff return and, and several two-point conversions. We got Liam Barry catching a pass for a touchdown. Ian Easton getting into the end zone. The Trojans really balanced tonight as far as who scored the points. The Trojan defense playing a great job against a, a, a lot of speed and size on that Pond Creek offense. So just a good night all around for the Trojans. Stay tuned to find out details about next week's playoff games. The Trojans will host a playoff game at Commitment Field. If you're able, please come on out and support the Trojans for their, their playoff run of 2023. That'll be it for tonight from Pond Creek. So have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to obatrojans.tv.